Hello and welcome. You are all in the right place. This is the Intramural Sports Virtual Roundtable. My name is Ashley Lacks. I will be helping to facilitate today's conversations. Um, I want to first start by pointing you to the chat function. You'll be using this a lot today and it's our way of allowing you to interact, to give us ideas, ask questions. Um, so take a moment, locate the chat function, uh, make sure you know how to use it because that is what we want to see people doing to help engage. Um, let's get started here. So today I am joined by a couple of presenters and Matt Diamond and Dr. Harris. They will help us um, talk through a couple of different topics that um, you've sent in and we've identified that may be pertinent to our intramural professionals right now. We wanted to start with a couple of community guidelines um, just so that we all have the same understanding of how we're gonna utilize this space today. Um, we encourage all participants to be open to new and creative ideas. This is kind of an unprecedented time for all of us. And so it calls for us to step outside of what we normally know and do to provide what we can for our students, our staff, even ourselves. Um, so we challenge you to think outside the box and we expect everyone to remain professional and respectful of others in this space. Um, the chat will be shared along with this uh, video. And so we want people to utilize it as a resource. If we are professional and respectful, it's a great resource. Um, and then we hope that everyone gets something out of this roundtable that's valuable and useful to them. Um, it's only gonna be as useful as the, the content that each of the other professionals around this country are putting into it. So again, we encourage you to use the chat function to kind of share the ideas, the things that you have going on right now. So what to expect, all of you are muted. Um, the chat function is gonna be the main way that you're able to communicate with us. Um, myself and the facilitators will be keeping an eye on the chat function so we can help point out some very helpful comments or address some of the questions that may be coming up. Um, this is being recorded along with the video to be posted to the website. Um, in talking about all of the topics and potentially not getting to some of them, there is a second virtual roundtable for intramural sports scheduled this time next week. So we will roll over any conversation we can't finish as well as introduce some new topics then. Um, so hopefully you're able to join us too. And if we didn't get to what you wanted to talk about, you get to it then. What are we talking about today? Um, so we brainstormed some of the things that are impacting us. We also fielded some different ideas from you all that you sent in. Um, so we'll start with esports. That's a main thing that a lot of us are looking to to help provide some sort of programming and outlet to students right now. But then we're gonna branch off into other creative programming. What are we doing virtually or otherwise to help keep our students engaged, to increase participation, et cetera. Um, then we wanna focus on our student staff a little bit and how you're able to maintain that connection with them right, right now. We'll then transition into more of our staff management overall, whether it's your student staff or your pro staff, how are you man managing virtually and what resources and tools do you have? Um, we'll touch a little bit on hiring processes right now and how those look for people, how they've changed, how people are adapting and evolving to make sure they get their hires filled. Um, then a little bit of our student staff talk again, this time with paying student staff. Are you paying your student staff? What are you paying them for? Are you able to? Um, a lot of questions surrounding that specifically. And then rounding out our topics today, what the heck do we do with all these champ shirts that we have left over? Um, if you put years on your champ shirts, you're in a much different position than um, those of us that may not put years on them. And so a couple of ideas either way as to how we manage all of that fun. Again, in mentioning that the conversation doesn't stop here, there are always more roundtables being developed as professionals um, express their interest. We're already in the works for a summer camp roundtable and a sport club roundtable, as well as a second intramural roundtable. Um, and then we just talked to um, Aaron from NERSA. There is a unified sports roundtable that's in the works right now and should be released later on. So there are a lot of ways for us to continue this conversation. Um, and if you haven't noticed, the community chats have been blowing up lately. So that's also a great resource for a lot of different ideas or getting your questions answered if we weren't able to assist specifically today. Um, so with that, we are going to jump right into our topics. Uh, Matt's going to start us off with esports and some of the um, impactful things going on there. All right. Um, thanks, Ash. Um, so quick poll um, just in the group chat. We want to kind of see what everyone's uh, doing as far as programming. Um, how many people are still programming for their students? And you can just kind of put it in the poll real quick. 
Okay, WCU is Kelsey Jones. Wow, there's a lot of people. Speaking of blowing up, Ashley, holy, holy Toledo. So um, that's really good that there's a lot of people that are going to be doing esports. Um, I know that at the time that when we um, started planning for this call, um, we did a lot of research for other groups um, trying to figure out what everyone else is doing. Um, I want to first kind of share my screen so that way um, everyone can see one of the great options that um, happened on Monday. Um, I unfortunately was not able to get on the chat, but I've seen this twice. Um, this is the Collegiate Recreation Administrator Sports Programs uh, group page um, that's ran um, by several people within um, our great association. Um, but I wanted to give a quick shout out to Laura, um, and I think it was uh, Justin who ran uh, this on Monday. Um, there's a great page in Google Docs that have a lot of information. Um, we want to make sure that everyone's kind of directed to this information just because we want to kind of push the envelope and continue pushing the envelope when we get to talking about esports. Um, and so this chat today is going to be a lot um, going through of what the commonalities were for our other groups. Um, and then also um, one of those things that um, we saw kind of happen throughout the country on what people are actually doing on a regular basis. And so you can see that this group chat, um, there's a lot of information on here. Um, the recent group files, obviously the game night guidelines um, was something good, um, but it's also a good um, avenue to have those conversations if you can't reach out to people, if you don't have those uh, people's con uh, contact information. Um, so good, huge shout out to those people. Um, let me stop sharing real quick. Um, Sam Houston's still doing, um, Art is doing a virtual tournament. Um, yeah, a lot of virtual challenges and things like that. I know that a lot of people have been um, doing trick shot challenge. I see, see that at Regis University by Jennifer. Um, Santa Clara is doing eSports. Um, so I think that's all um, great information to have because I think that a lot of people across the country are gonna be doing these new eSports. Um, and one of the things that we also wanted to give an opportunity to um, have everyone have another community is on March 30th, I think Geeks is, Geeks is gonna have a forum um, similar to this, it's going to be at 2 p.m. Pacific time, 5 p.m. East Coast time. Um, you do have to register for that if I'm at, if I if I remember correctly, um, and you can find all this on the Ideas in Motion page on NERSA. Um, they'll go a little bit more in depth of how to set leagues up, um, how you know what the basic terminology is. I know that there's some people that we're having a wide variety of people that are into esports, or now that we have this. Um, this interesting time in our country that are barely, you know, taking the plunge into esports and trying to figure out what we're going to be doing um, as a uh, university or as an enroll program going moving forward. Um, so let's talk about esports. Um, so I know that there's been a couple games and platforms um, that have been um, talked about. Obviously, the the regular ones are Xbox, PlayStation Four. Um, some people have been working off of a computer or switches and things like that. Um, and so um, in the group chat, I mean, uh, can we just continue like kind of giving me like some things, maybe if I didn't um, talk about that. I see uh, Jacob Walker talk about virtual trivia through Zoom, Kahoo, um, Sam, Sam Houston as well, um, which is all great information. Um, Ashley just dropped in some of the Google Docs for um, eSports. Um, both of those Google Docs are great ways to kind of put the information into. So if you want to do something, um, you can reach out to someone and say, hey, how are you running your, uh, your particular uh, uh, information on this uh, actual game? Um, let's see what else everyone is saying. Spoke with our esports director here in Akron. He suggested specific games for specific platforms. Good information, Aaron, um, about those. Um, I know that there, there has been some people that have been talking about um, specifically, um, uh, the cross-platform games. So like if you play FIFA or you play Madden or you play 2K, um, is there a possibility of actually sharing those uh, portions uh, across platforms? Um, and then talking a little bit about more about games. Um, so you're running FIFA and setting up divisions as platform, that's good. Uh, for those sport games, how are you organizing such? Um, so yeah, so a, a lot of people have been organizing them on IM League using gamer tags um, or whatever other um, system um, that you use at your, your university, whereas that's Fusion IM, IM Leagues. 
Um, and then typically um, from a lot of the conversation that we've had, um, people will use their gamer tags and they'll be able to either upload an image of the final score or just put the final score into the game. And those different leagues will basically populate themselves. Um, and you can do the tournament style, you can do a round robin style, you can do it like an actual league where, where it goes four or five weeks. Um, within the Google Doc that um, they created um, off of the talk on Monday, um, they actually had like a setup program where, you know, FIFA ran every Tuesday, um, Madden was every Wednesday, 2K was every Thursday. And so that way everyone would just log on, see who they needed to play, find them and then go from there. Oregon State, you, you guys are doing Fortnite Fridays. Wow, that's actually cool with the alliteration. Um, and then um, Louisiana is actually running statewide esports. We'll kind of get into that. That's one of the topics that we're going to um, dive into in a little bit, just because um, when we were talking about um, going in esports, is it going to be something that we can do like all the big 12 schools will have in enroll programs with the representative or the champion of, uh, of that quarter or semester play against, you know, the other person and have like a big 12 uh, competition. Um, we're getting real, ready to deal with that and we come across problems with hate speech or for profanity in the esport realm. Oh, that's going to be a great topic. Um, also, uh, Shane, um, we will talk about that. It's actually on my list of things to talk about. Um, and then, um, so does anyone have any questions about, like, I know that some, some schools are doing, the big ones obviously are the sport games, FIFA, 2K, Madden. I know Super Smash Bros. is, is something big. Rocket League is being big. Uh, League, uh, was it uh, League of Legends? I'm still kind of learning how to, uh, all those games that I don't participate in. Um, perfect, okay. Uh, not to talk verbally. So no, so uh, Jack Wells says that we don't let them talk verbally, but they can in the chat, advanced language that you set as an unsportsmanlike. So that's some great information. So setting, having those settings, uh, when you go and, and do these platforms and these games, it's a possibility of setting the unsportsmanlike so that way any speech like that will actually, you'll deter it or you can have a penalty for those people that might um, be doing any of those things. Anyone figure out how to create private server for turn, Fortnite tournaments? Um, Mitch, uh, apparently Epic has made it harder to host your own tournament. Um, that's actually a great question, Mitch, um, about Fortnite tournaments. Um, I think it's something that uh, we have kind of talked about and haven't dive, uh, dove into uh, too much, um, but we will in the, uh, and then Ashley said, uh, Geeks will help with Fortnite tournaments. So March 30th, Mitch, you gotta be on that call so that we can find out uh, more about that. Um, and then Mike Dickinson, um, so about the education about players, that is something that I've, we've been doing and dealing with with our university. So um, we have come up with like disclaimers um, about saying about what should and shouldn't be done in these. Obviously when they're signing up for these tournaments, they still have to go through um, a registration portal. So just adding that into your specific online registration um, settings. So that way you can say, hey, um, these are the things that we don't want. Um, obviously, a majority of the kids aren't going to read them. They just scroll down to the bottom, say approve, so that way they can register. But we want to make sure that it's predominant, um, either in bold or even sending them another email, like a captain's email, um, prior to the league starting and saying, hey, look, we are not going to tolerate um, a bunch of this stuff. Um, one of the other things that we talked about was the violence in video games. Um, that was a huge topic. How does everyone and their universities dealing with um, looking at violence, like promoting violence, Call of Duties. Um, I know Fortnite, obviously, even though it's just cartoon characters, but what is everyone doing and what's the university stance on promoting violence within in real sports? Okay, Laura Hoff, and we do not uh, allow any first person shooter games. We're on the same, on the same boat, Laura, Lauren. No go for shooters, you, uh, okay, thanks Antonio. Not allowed. So yeah, so it looks like, um, wow, it looks like kind of resounding. Everyone's kind of saying no on those games. And I think that that's going to be, for the most part, um, our non-shooter games. Oh, wow. Um, so Clint Jones, as long as 50% of our sports are non-violent, we allow them. Um, that's pretty interesting, Clint. I would love to hear um, more of that because um, we are kind of like we're either in or out. I've, I've heard yes and no, um, but primarily no, nothing rated M or higher. Um, we allow them, we feel that it would be a good idea to have these people connect with others at the university rather than remain distant and play them away. Okay, cool. Uh, 
you know, the esports program on campus of the University of Standard has been set. Okay, cool, Gerard from uh, Ohio State. Uh, that was a, one of the topics that uh, we talked about also was balancing competitive players um, versus our varsity esport programs, um, our club sports, and then our intramural sports, similar to what we deal with on a regular basis with our participants that are um, just participating in the, in the sports that we, we miss now. Um, where does, uh, how is everyone dealing with, uh, Jacob, thank you for that uh, esports programming, um, including sportsmanship rules, uh, Google, Google Doc. But how's everyone dealing with, um, I know at our university, we have a couple players that actually play professionally. Um, they play professionally uh, Super Smash Brothers as well as Rocket League and other, other games. How are we dealing with that and looking at that from a registration standpoint? Um, obviously, a majority of those people that play professionally, they're going to be making money um, uh, or winning things. Um, what are we going to do uh, as far as moving along with saying who can and cannot play? Because I know that some universities have um, programs where they're athletics um, or they're considered athletic, uh, an athletic sport. Then we have some programs that are building up their club sport, e-sports uh, gaming. And then we just have those uh, students also that have intramural sports um, See, uh, we don't worry about anything. We schedule brackets, Counter Strike, Call of Duty. All right, Cameron, and then uh, do you break esports participation by skill level or all free? Trey, that's a great question. Um, Trey's question was, do you break esports participation by skill level or all free for all? Um, I think that we're going to begin with a free for all at this point at UCR. Ash, well, uh, what are you going to be doing um, at Wisconsin? We don't have a varsity esports uh, program. We do have a esports club that just joined our program, and they have helped us so far in facilitating a lot of our programming for esports prior to the campus shutdown. Um, so we engage them in terms of what sports um, are most popular amongst their members. We then bracket off club players versus um, anyone else who's interested. Um, but we have a club limit on all of our intramural rosters, right? We can't have more than two club members playing on any intramural sport. And so the only way for them to be able to play is for us to break it into a club specific bracket so we don't break our own policy. So that's what we do right now. If you're in the club, you play here. If you're not in the club, you play here. Other than that, we do not uh, specifically divvy up that competition level. God. Uh, okay, cool. That's, uh, yeah. So Jacob said they, uh, the Jacob Walker said limited to one club player from the club team. So you get one player from esports league of legends team on a league of legends team for regular intramural sports participation. And very similar to policy to other in real sports. And I think that's going to be probably the best practice um, and just kind of combining those things where you have a list of those club sport participants that are on your esports gaming and what game they actually participate. Um, and then if they are able to participate in the, uh, in the intramural leagues. Um, is anyone streaming online? Oh, that's a great question, Tom. Um, treat the same limit. Does anyone have a process in place for it's streaming intramural contest. So Shane, um, Shane and Tom, you guys brought up a really good uh, uh, kind of quote that we actually didn't have on our on, uh, on our list is streaming uh, these actual games online. Um, so Ashley, maybe we can add this to the next topic and do a little bit more research um, and then go from there. Uh, Jack Wells says we have our first live stream event tomorrow. Hey, Jake, Jack, do you have um, like a link possibly that you can share with us? Um, how you're going to be streaming um, or where you're going to be streaming. It's probably going to be Twitch or something, right? Free for all esports also to create an inclusive environment. Okay. Um, it's all good information. Michael SD State breaks skill level on bigger titles. Um, so Rocket League and Super Smash Brothers. I think that's going to be probably the consensus of people that, um, that might be breaking it up, maybe a competitive level. Um, I think at Wyoming, Jay from Wyoming said we created a social league and a competitive league. Um, I think that we're going to probably be doing the same thing here in Riverside is looking at the, the amount of time that we have or the amount of players that we have um, and just kind of separating them because um, like any other league, you're going to be able to see who's killing people in FIFA, who's killing people in Madden, um, and then maybe adjust it as we go. Um, let me see the other two messages. Um, we, we tried streaming on a mixer and it hasn't been that successful. Okay, prepping some virtual events for next week, but I'm curious. Cool. Um, communicate. Uh, so, Sean, uh, communication for esports participants and keeping them updated on the programs. Um, we've been doing a lot of stuff through IM Leagues and sending them out to all of our participants. Um, Gabby said Twitch is a great streaming service for esports. Um, 
And then Aaron, we're going to go set it up via IM leagues and then allow them to play offline and then report who wins. Um, Aaron, do you know how, um, I guess, how that process is going to be? Obviously, both people are just going to be reporting scores on IM leagues like normal. Um, and then who's going to be checking those, uh, those scores? Uh, Mixture on Xbox is free from Jason Darby. Um, and then Ash, we're communicating through IM League, social media, social media. Um, those are the biggest things um, uh, that I think that we're kind of looking at is just making sure that we provide the opportunity for them to participate. Um, we also talked about the violent video games philosophy. And, um, and then <clears throat> one of the last things is, uh, um, is there anyone else doing anything besides esports? Um, so some of the other stuff that we talked about was creating virtual programming as far as um, um, like Discord, house party, those things. Is anyone else doing um, trivia nights? Jackie, I am team. Oh, okay. Anna, I am team step counting competitions. That would be relatively easy to set up. I'm asking both participants to submit a Google form after the game. Okay, so Colin's got the, uh, got, got a Google form going. That's pretty pretty uh, easy to, to fix. I am leagues games, get creative. Oh, virtual Pictionary, Charades, and Family Feud. Those are all great ideas. Self-report 5K. I'll, I would walk the fastest 5K ever. Um, Nebraska is doing running a ch different challenge. So, Aaron, what kind of challenges are you guys doing? I don't want to dip into your Kool-Aid too much, but um, what are some things that, that you're doing at Nebraska, like as far as challenges? Is it, is it a daily thing or is it you have to do it by the end of the, um, end of the like Friday or Saturday? All right, can you hear me? <clears throat> yep. We're good? Okay. Uh, so next week we're starting out with a 5K and they can put as many runs together as they want to for that. So if they want to run it a mile each day and get to the five, or a mile each day and get to the three miles, that works as well. Um, they have to send us a picture of, or a screenshot of the app that they use to track their run along with a photo because we're going to end up using the photo on our social media. And it's, if they send us their handle too, we'll try to put it on Instagram and things like that. And then the next week we're going to do a 10K. So however many runs it takes them to get to the 10K, and then we're going to do a half marathon, then we're going to do a marathon. And then we're going to add all of their miles up and have an overall champion at the end of it all because that's the five weeks that we have left in the semester. Dope. Thanks, Aaron. Those are all great ideas. I think um, now we're going to move on to our next topic, right, Ash? Yes, sir. Natasha's going to chat next about student engagement overall and how we're making connections with our student staff or different creative ideas that may come up in the realm of what we do with our students in general. All right, thanks, Ashley. Um, hello to everybody. It's nice to see all your faces and that you guys are uh, happy and smiling and not going crazy. So that's a good thing. I'm glad to see that everybody's doing well. Um, so with that being said, um, with student engagement, just a kind of a quick poll, um, what student staff groups are people currently planning engagement for? So for example, supervisors or if you have like a leadership team or uh, people who take leads for your sports, specific sports, um, official scorekeepers, what kind of uh, folks are we? So we have a rec center staff, student workers in the fitness center, okay, um, online modules. So Laura, could you, I'm just curious, could you expand on those online modules? Like are they dealing with um, specific areas of training that could benefit students? Sure, we are doing um, five to eight hours with general content. We're going over the general competencies we have for our department. Mm -hmm. And then two to three hours are uh, program specific. All right, nice, I like that. Thank you. All right, uh, let's see here, so we have um, no officials or scorekeepers, kind of understandable. Um, Gerard, I am curious, have you guys, even though you're only doing training for supervisors, have you guys thought about any ways to engage officials? Um, I think scorekeepers would be a little challenging, but anything about engaging with your officials? We have, I think we're just putting all of our eggs in the supervisor basket for now. Um, we're still getting engagement with the officials. We're doing all of our 
uh, supervisor interviews virtually. Uh, so that'll be some engagement that we do have. Uh, but for uh, the development piece, we are uh, only looking at our supervisors as of now. Okay, all right. Um, so a question that Maria had was, these particular areas that you guys are doing, the modules and the training, are they actually paid? And I know we're gonna hit on that, Ashley's gonna hit on that, but it is at least a general question. Um, so Laura says hers are paid. Bonnie has hers as being paid. Okay, so it looks like most of you have some type of um, hours or whatnot set aside in order to pay these students if they're participating in these. Um, some of you are still waiting on uh, pending fun funding availability because they are virtual training. So yeah, a lot of us are running into, well, they're not physically on campus. So how are we going to track? So there's a question there. If they are um, coming into these trainings, how are you guys tracking um, in regards to, we know that many trainings and modules, you can log in and if you don't put your picture up, you can walk away. Um, so how is it that we are kind of tracking uh, to see that they are actually engaged? Are we following up with any quizzes? Um, let's see here. So we do have a couple people paid. Actually, let's go back to Laura, if you don't mind. Um, since she initially said that she had these training modules. Yeah, we are, um, so we're just kind of providing an assessment and a lot of it's videos, but at the end of the day, we're, if we're giving them an opportunity to make money, that's what we're most worried about. We're not necessarily worried about them getting every single second to be completely honest. Okay. No, I appreciate the honesty because I know a lot of us, we're going to be dealing with that if we want to go down this path. All right, let's see here. Um, so Tom, you had said you have 10 hours of student development and professional development from now until the end of the semester. Um, with it all being virtual, um, is there, are there any particular topics that you guys are trying to focus on to keep students fresh um, as they go maybe into the summer semesters or in coming back in the fall? Yeah, Natasha, we have a university mandate to keep our students uh, trained. So we have uh, values that are like uh, the president has identified. So like communication, uh, uh, career readiness, those kind of things. And then we supplement it with Zoom trainings. So we have about eight hours of LinkedIn learning. And as the semester goes on, when we have more time to develop our video content, we'll start scaling back the LinkedIn learning material and get more officials development, but uh, the expectation is them to have at least 10 to 15 hours a week of material from now until the end of the semester. Okay. All right. Good to know. Thank you for sharing. Uh, let's see here. So uh, David at Toledo, I love the idea of doing weekly and bi-weekly lunchtime chats. Um, how have those kind of gone and what have been the discussions that you guys have chatted about? So we actually haven't had a discussion yet. We just started this week. So next week we started as a pro staff and next week we're gonna just invite the students to join in with us um, and just kind of have a casual lunchtime chat, anything they wanna discuss, um, and then kind of go from there to see what they are interested in doing in terms of training. But we're not, we're unable to pay our staff due to the university mandates right now. Okay, all right. Well, good to know. I still. I still say it's great that you're reaching out to your students and trying to keep that connection because I think that's what this time uh, is all about for students to have that connection since many of us are either cooped up in the house um, or you know we're kind of limited to uh, just our surroundings. So I think that's really good that you guys are doing that. Uh, let's see here. All right, Aaron, you have on here, um, Aaron Brooks, uh, you have on here, you're going to have a meeting with Kyle from uh, Zoom tomorrow. How are how are you guys um, d dealing with that? Um, what what is your kind of uh, goal in regards to meeting with um, some of the folks in the officiating realm uh, to keep that conversation going? Hi everyone. Um, <clears throat> my name is Aaron Brooks. I'm from the University of Akron. Uh, one of the things that I had thought about was. A lot of times we, we do a lot of video breakdown and different things with our students on campuses. Um, 
and some of our students throughout the country have filmed that they would like broken down by somebody that might be of a higher level. Uh, so one of the things I'm going to pitch to Kyle tomorrow is to have an open, at least for a certain time, uh, Zoom account for any student who might not have access to Zoom and then they can submit videos and then those of us that work collegiate football, basketball, soccer, whatever sport might they might want to have film breakdown from, we can donate a couple hours of our week, uh, different days of the week from different people and we can actually go through and break down film with them or whomever might want to watch. So uh, he seems very receptive to it and I know that we have more than enough quality referees and officials throughout the country in our realm that I don't think it would be very difficult for us to get this put together. Um, if they want to donate film and have us break their film down, if some of us want to break our film down to show our mistakes and, you know, that they can learn from, just a way for us to still impact students nationally uh, that might not have that access with their current programs. Right. Okay, good, like that. Um, definitely allows to keep them kind of in the mix of what it is they enjoy doing, which obviously is officiating and learning from those who are officiating at a higher level. So real good to know. Uh, Antonio has shared a um, link from learning from uh, stuff on the uh, high school federation. So definitely take a look at that. You have to scroll back through obviously the, the chat to catch that link. So Antonio, we appreciate you sharing that. Um, let's see here. So it looks that many of you are still able to pay your students to a certain time. Um, I guess the, the question I have on there is there, is that just set up mandatory by the university? Is that something that was distinguished between your departments? And um, are we still having people who are kind of trying to fight for that? Anybody can answer that in the chat. Because um, it seems like it's all different. Uh, Kareem has, we're paying our students for hours they were scheduled for. Okay, so maybe most of you guys schedule. I think, Ashley, you talked about this earlier um, in our just like group discussion that they were initially scheduled for a period of time. And so that's why you're able to pay them up to that point. Okay, um, all right. So uh, let's move on to a couple other questions here. Is anyone trying to do any type of games with their staff? Um, to keep them engaged um, and not necessarily, or I should say something that is different than what we're trying to do with our participants. Let's see if we have anybody. Oh, hold on, hold on, hold on. Sorry, I'm trying to read as fast as you guys are putting this stuff up here, so. Well, um, I know that uh, we have the big trivia night that's going to be coming up that uh, has been put together. So definitely make sure that you're looking out for that particular um, opportunity to participate and pass that on to your students. Uh, let's see here. Anybody considering their staff certified in high school sports pay for their certification? So that's one of the questions asked by Jake Wells. Does anybody pay for their certifications for their students? Um, to attend the training and have that used towards them being certified as a, an official. Uh, we're going through training assessment. A lot of time. Question is relevant. Okay. Um, I think it, obviously it's difficult because many of us have to practice social distancing. So any type of social activities would probably be limited in that respect. Um, so here's a question uh, based off the simple fact that. Our students do a lot for our programs and we're all very thankful for them. Have all of you still been able to continue that student recognition? I know many programs will have where they do the end of the year banquet. Obviously the banquet can't take place, but there may be awards um, or recognition that we provide. Do we have people who are continuing to do that and are able to do that? Let's see here. Like I said, I'm trying to scroll and catch up here. So we got a couple weekly crossword puzzles for stuff for our staff to do together. I like that. Netflix party, uh, Twitter connect four, photo challenges, baby pics. Oh, I like that one, Gabby. Um, professional development materials. 
Tom just shared some professional development materials in the link. Let's see here. <laughs> Thank you, Flick, for always giving us the most uh, comical responses. Um, so Greg at Creighton, you're still continuing your end of the year rewards. So the question is, if you're continuing your rewards, how are you getting these items out to your students? Jen O'Reilly, you guys are doing a virtual banquet. So who's gonna present the awards online? Just curious. I think Gerard said he is. All right, uh, let's see here. So you guys are gonna present them. Okay, no, I like that idea. Ooh, edible arrangements, Trevor. Um, how are you guys, how do you guys have the funding for that? That's kind of cool. Those, those things are awesome. So we, um, we usually honor our seniors with a uh, diploma frame. And so we were talking yesterday, we actually had a staff, we're not a very big um, program, sorry. Oh, you're Daddy right. here too. Um, we're actually not a very big program. And so we, ha we only have four, let's see, five professional staff. So, um, and then our overall staff is 50. And okay. so we're not, yeah, we don't have as much going out as uh, most programs do as far as funding. Um, but it's, it was just one of those things where we aren't spending money on anything right now. And mm -hmm. so we just kind of thought, you know, how could we, you know, maybe show some appreciation when we do give these awards. And that was just one of the things I was thinking about because edible, edible arrangements are delicious. All right. Sounds good. We appreciate, appreciate you sharing for sure. Um, yeah, actually here at Kentucky, we give out, uh, go figure, uh, julep cups for those who are graduating. Uh, we are Kentucky. Uh, Kentucky Derby, all that fun stuff. Uh, obviously, there's no beverages included. It's just the cup. Um, but it, it is a nice touch that we do. And so we're going to continue to do that. And we'll have to mail them. And it looks like a lot of people are either presenting them virtually. And then hopefully, when the students return on campus, they'll be able to give them to them or they're going to ship them out. So um, those, are, those are awesome ideas for sure. Um, so the last one I have here um, for social media. Uh, do you guys have control over your campus's rec social media to, in direct, to directly engage with your students? Um, and kind of what does this look like? So if you guys could share that, that would be great. This is Don at Augustana. Yes, Don. How are you doing? Good, how are you? Good. Um, we, I, it was bouncing between conference calls because I just got off with the directors. And we're trying to direct as much information through our student life director, but really they want it to come out of mostly out of communications and marketing. Okay. It's, like, it's like it's to funnel it into one email versus me generating, somebody else generating. So unless they specifically say yes to me, send it to them and they'll, they'll send it out. Because I just met with all my wellness instructors and they love the idea that we're going to be able to do a bunch of online and Zoom recreational activities in terms of group exercise yeah but they still like it to come through one channel right yeah no that makes sense it, it kind of keeps everything where it needs to be and you probably can um everybody can access that one area in order to make sure they're getting all the information so i think yeah. that's definitely a good idea keep it keep it controlled in one area and then people aren't having to jump to different spots well you don't want the kids to be inundated where they're getting hit i mean they're they're in enough turmoil is in their own ways now it's if we can give a concise piece of information that's just shared from the college yeah it's kind of a one-stop shop i guess is a good way to put it yeah no i definitely like that idea all right let's see thank you for sharing let's see um so ithaca college has full control over their social media that's awesome um let's see so much of the, it looks like a lot of you have access uh, and all of those things go through your marketing department or a person who's designated as your marketing person. And also, this is also where everything goes through. Universal relations. Um, yeah, so those are definitely some things to consider to make sure that any messages that we're kicking out are consistent with what the university um, uh, goals are. And it looks like a lot of you have direct control, which is great. 
Um, all right. So uh, unless there's something that I missed, Ashley or Matt, um, or a comment that I missed that you think we should definitely speak about, um, I think I'm wrapped up with my part. No, I think there were a lot of really good ideas that came through the chat. And so as people are um, reviewing this, going back through and seeing some of those ideas that popped up as we were chatting about other things, um, I, there's only so many things that we can highlight right now, but there were a ton of really good ideas in there, whether it was things that you're doing just with your staff to engage or different ideas that you have for platforms, et cetera. Um, so definitely encourage you all to come back through that after this gets posted because you may have missed something that was really good and helpful there. Um, we're going to transition a little bit to more HR and management based questions that apply to us. And with that, we're going to do a quick poll again. Um, how many people are currently or will be expected to telecommute for at least the time being? And I assume that number is relatively high considering a lot of us are programming. So I would assume that we are being paid for that um, and it's not our volunteer work, but um, I know that puts a lot of us in a unique position that we potentially haven't on a regular basis telecommuted ever before. Um, and that then presents some unique logistical challenges for how we do our job. So we wanna talk through a couple of those there. Um, with those that are telecommuting and maybe managing a team, whether it's of student staff or professional staff, can you start to list some of the resources that you're using to communicate, to manage, to keep things in order? Um, we right now are utilizing uh, WebEx through our campus. That is our main teleconferencing program. They pay for it, so we get to use it. Um, it's very similar to Zoom, the functionality of it. Some people debate one is better versus the other, but it overall does the same thing. Um, and then we are a big Microsoft Teams group um, with a lot of the organizing that can happen there, as well as making direct calls to people, organizing to-do lists, different chat functions, et cetera. And so um, we've found those two things to be useful um, and Microsoft Teams being more of a free platform. So even if you, your university isn't purchasing software for you, um, you should be able to make a Microsoft Teams account and then facilitate that either desktop version, the app version. Um, I also have on my phone, so I'm kind of connected in that way. Um, I've seen, we used to use Slack that is, um, very similar to Microsoft Teams. We found some different functionalities in Teams that Slack didn't have. And so we recently transitioned this year, but I think um, Slack is another fantastic tool for um, organizing the, the management of everything. Um, a couple of other things that people are utilizing on here that I think are really creative. Um, the Discord aspect of chat functions and keeping that communication going. House Party is a cool concept. Um, Brooks, do you want to speak a little bit more to how you're utilizing House Party for your staff? Yeah, sure. So uh, one of the things that I'm trying to actively do is at least be in touch with my staff, going from seeing them daily to um, not having seen them at all in a couple of weeks. It's difficult. So uh, we've done basically like a, every other day or a couple times a week, we'll do just a house party with my supervisors and then a house party with anybody else that is on staff that might want to chime in and, and see each other. Um, they're already doing it on their own. Um, they're doing it for their own <clears throat> recreational purposes um, in the evenings. So uh, I don't do it. It's only from eight to five that I talk to them, but um, they, uh, they've enjoyed it. They enjoy the fact that we're still connected, that we're still um, trying to do some things. We've watched a TED Talk together uh, on one of them. So just different ways to engage and them to not think that uh, I'm still paying them. So uh, I'm at least having them chat with me once or twice a week. Thank you. And I think that's um, one of the things that we've been encouraged to do as a staff here is just that regular check-in, whatever that means to us. Um, with a lot more free time, that may mean a lot more meetings, but that face-to-face -face being so valuable and important for us. Um, we just got off of spring break, and so the ability to see our student staff again, it's like we're itching for that, and so it's been a really nice breakup in what is now, at least for me, day 13 of quarantine, and so um, that's a really cool way to stay engaged with the students 
Um, for those of us who are managing remotely, are there tools or resources that campus is providing to help you manage virtually? Um, considering this may not be something that we've ever taken a class on or done a workshop on or have any experience in, um, are there any resources that either your division is coming up with or campus is already lined up to say, here's how we're going to help you um, be better managers virtually? Um, and I know for Wisconsin, they, our OHR as a campus put together a workshop that they've rolled out like several versions now because it filled so quickly, but they are how to manage virtually, literally a 30 minute online class. And we have to watch a 40 minute video before we go in. And then that 30 minute class being us talking through different situations, logistics, et cetera. Um, but that's at least something resource wise that campus has rolled out to help us in terms of managing virtually. Um, our IT department has also been um, tapped as a resource and are supposed to help with a lot of the re remote logistics, especially for um, staff that may not have been very tech savvy before this. Um, and I know that Dunnigan mentioned his IT team is helping him with like, my camera's broken. How do I <laughs> video conference if I can't get my camera to work and vice versa. Um, I think if there are any resources that your campuses are providing that are shareable, that's also something that will be helpful to the community. Um, with our virtual training, it's registration only, but if there are any things that I come across that I am able to share, um, I would encourage you all to as well. And we all need to figure out what this looks like and I don't think any of us are gonna be experts, so we can all learn together. Um, the next fun question, Conference call etiquette. Um, so nobody wants to be the next uh, trending Twitter hashtag of what to not do on a virtual conference call. And more and more of these are getting recorded so that um, they can be a resource for other people. And so um, are there things that you are currently doing to establish etiquette on your conference calls, whether it's with your professional staff or your student staff? Um, <laughs> And how, how are you like encouraging people on your conference calls to not be Jennifer, right? Um, I know Natasha talked about yesterday when we were working through this, when she sets up a conference call specific to Zoom, everyone comes in as muted for both their video and their audio, and they physically have to be the ones to turn on both of those things. And that then allows the user to know how to do that. And also there's no mishaps on the front end of oh crap, I didn't know my camera was on. Um, but there are obviously uh, a lot of errors or issues that can pop up that uh, then make it a little bit more unprofessional. Um, Zoom has this fun feature where you can change the background. WebEx, we don't get that. So the, the entertainment value versus the, the professional lens that we're looking through. For us, we haven't released any official um, like documentation on etiquette. We held a yoga class for all of our pro staff um, this Monday morning. And then immediately afterwards, we all received an email about muting ourselves and how muting ourselves will create a better yoga environment. Um, a lot of background noise with just everybody's life going on and that obviously not being the coolest yoga environment. So that's the only thing that we are as a staff kind of agreed upon as everybody meets themselves. Um, but things like bringing your pup to the conference call, highly encouraged the same with kids, the same with random spouses and partners dropping in to say hello. Um, we haven't really like, we've been very flexible with where everyone is in their home life and transitioning to the telecommuting piece. Um, the same thing with like dress code Dunnigan and I, thought today would be a little fun to do some floral prints. Um, it gets a little boring to see everybody in like pajamas every day, right? So are there things that you're doing to spice up your conference calls, whether it's with um, your student staff, your pro staff, and do you do some type of, hey, we're gonna all wear jerseys today just so that visually we see something different than the normal head and t-shirt look. Um, people are posting some things on the side. The biggest recommendation that's come in so far is pants, square pants. Um, I highly encourage that as well as um, other fun things that are going on. Yes, I encourage you all to wear clean clothes. I think at some point by like day three or four, people can tell that you aren't putting in the effort to change anything. But overall, I think 
we're in unique times having fun with the, the situation that we're in. We're campus rec professionals. I think we're allowed to do that just a little hey, bit. Hey, Ashley. Yeah. We, um, sorry to chime in again from Augie. Okay. Uh, I know some schools, well, several schools will probably be approaching us if they haven't already. We're going to be coming up where I would normally be doing desk staff interviews uh, in the next month. And the, those for applications, that's, that has went out. Well, normally those interviews are done when you get down to your 20, 25, 30 interviews. We're going to probably pretty much have to do those through Zoom. So oh, I've been working with our departments to make sure there are some thir certain FERPA you know, hey, this is online, we're gonna be talking just to predicate they know ahead of time that we're not doing this face-to-face, -face, at least in a, in a room, but online. Now it should just be the two of us, but I wanna make sure I have my virtual waiting room set up so somebody just can't in on the conversation. So it's not exactly what you're saying, but it's, it's relative because I'm sure we're all gonna be approaching it. So I just thought I'd throw that out there. Absolutely, and I think um, that's an excellent segue into my next topic, which is staff hirings and what everyone has done to kind of adjust and adapt to the needs of hiring staff, yet being on a freeze of traveling or even being able to hire. Um, I know we were told today to kind of hold off on any student staff hirings right now because we don't know what a timeline is and how do you hire a student and then tell them, I uh, will start paying you in two months or three months or we don't know, right? So um, are people on hiring freezes right now, are people currently in search mode for either student staff positions or pro staff positions? And then how are you navigating that? Um, so for Wisconsin, we actually have seven professional positions out right now, as well as like 14 intern positions. Um, for our two sport program coordinator positions, we have been able to push through that hiring process because they are backfill positions instead of newly created positions. So we are turning our on-campus interviews into final interviews that are virtual. Um, so for most of the day, we'll have the candidates engaged in different interviews, chatting with different stakeholder groups. They will do a presentation that they'll share their screen with, um, et cetera. But we are kind of in this holding pattern for a lot of our other positions in terms of what, uh, what, what can we do, what do we do, and if we have to freeze, what that delay looks like. Um, it looks like for a lot of universities right now, you're on a freeze for either everything or for pro staff positions. A couple of you have been lucky to not be on that freeze yet, um, but it looks like a large majority of us are having to pump the brakes on things. Um, for our virtual uh, interview, we're doing the same thing that Don kind of described is everyone comes to a lobby you then get accepted into the virtual conference call from the lobby. Then you kick everybody out, let the candidate have a little bit of time, then invite the next group in from the lobby. And so we're able to kind of police that way to make sure that um, people from one group aren't running into the interview of another group and that we're able to kind of uh, dictate the one-on-one -on -one times as well and make sure the search committee isn't in the one-on-one, -on -one, vice versa. But um, we're going to try it out and then see how it works and then roll from there and again try to be adaptable to the situation knowing we want to get the best people we want to fill those positions and we want to provide a, a quality experience to the candidates themselves um we had a question will whoever controls the lobby have to be in on the calls um for webex i know you can switch the host and the presenter so if i start the meeting and i am the host I can assign someone else, say I want Natasha to be the host. I assign Natasha to be the host. I then leave, Natasha's the host and can now lock down the room. I can then go to the lobby, Natasha admit me back and then make me the host again when she's done with the interview portion. So kind of just passing off the host from person to person to make sure that we all have the ability to lock the lobby as needed. Um, but you can still have that privacy, get people in and out, et cetera. Um, other questions? Is anyone using this time to assess, to do a little bit deeper dive into some of their um, offerings or the participant satisfaction or even, um, we thought this would be a great time to look a little bit more into learning outcomes and to see how we can start to tie those to our program in a little bit more formal of a capacity. Um, but are there um, like 
projects that we're aiming to get to that we haven't been able to get to in the past? Is that one of the focuses that people are kind of looking to now? Um, the last thing that I want to hit on today, because I think we'll want to continue a little bit of the conversation of paying students, how we're paying them, et cetera. There were a lot of feedback on that, and so that may be something that we roll into next week. Um, but with the last couple of minutes that we have on the call today, one of the topics that was sent in, and it may impact all of us, is what are we doing with all these champ shirts? Um, so you had a bunch of summer or spring sports lined up. You can't play them. You had a bunch of shirts to give out to people, and now you can't even get access to them, let alone give them out right now. Um, I know some people are running challenges and things and plan to mail those shirts or give those shirts out once campus is back open. But that still creates a significant gap in terms of what we were planning to hand out versus what we're actually able to. So um, what are people doing to make best use out of those versus kind of just throwing them everywhere you possibly can? Um, I know for Wisconsin, we went away from years on shirts a couple of years ago because we ran into a shortage problem from one semester to the other. And we do the same design, but we do a fall shirt and a spring shirt. And those are obviously two different years. So if we run out of our fall shirts, we can't use the spring shirts for fall and vice versa. So we got rid of the years to help us a little bit easier um, in that capacity. So I plan on utilizing those shirts going forward and then switching over the design once we run out and that helping to save on our costs so that we can put that towards other things. Um, but there are some other things on the sides that people are doing with champ shirts. It looks like um, some are using them for promotional materials. Some are going to use them for t-shirt exchanges going forward, which we're going to have some dope t-shirt exchanges for the next couple of conferences. So be on the lookout for that. Um, some people have had the same t-shirt design and that's um, going to continue. And so they don't have a big impact to their champ shirts. I know a couple of different universities across the country do that and maybe just change the color or something. So they're in a really good spot and that's a cool um, strategy to go with design wise. Um, I know, depending on how long campus is shut down, we've talked about potentially mailing them to have a little bit more of an impact on that reward piece. Um, there's a cap on how much we can spend our money on mailing, and so I have to look at the logistics of that through our HR and finance pieces, um, but we definitely want to mail them out as well, and it looks like some other people are, are looking into it. Um, if you participate in the NURSA trivia challenge, we are asking that you contribute some champ shirts because the winners are going to get champ shirts as well as random drawings for champ shirts and other gifts that people are able to submit. So if you have any extras and you would like to contribute, I think that would be more than welcome. Um, so to make sure that we're cognizant of everyone's time, I know there were some things that we weren't able to get to. If there are topics that you're super interested in hearing about next week, put those in the chat that will help us lead the conversation. Next week, I'll have John Braska from Florida and Megan Normasol from UCLA helping to uh, facilitate the conversation. You have to register for next week's roundtable with a, they will provide a different link to the Zoom call. So make sure if you are interested in um, participating again next week that you register so you have next week's link. Um, Please continue to engage on the communities of practice and continue to look on the ideas in motion page for updated roundtable options. Um, and then if there are any questions that didn't get answered, all of the facilitators here today are um, willing to be a resource. So reach out to us, we can answer anything as well as lean on each other as professionals. That's what we're all here for. Um, with that, I thank you all for joining us today. I hope you have a fabulous rest of your week. Um, I'm totally wearing a jersey next week. It's Jersey week. All right, next week's Jersey week. We just decided, that's fantastic. All right, I will see you all next week in your fun jerseys. Have a great and wonderful day.